Hi, everybody. I'm Wendy Murdoch, and this is Webinars with Wendy. I am continuing my series of webinars, which is now going on for at least two years. And it's really great because every time I turn around, there's someone else really interesting to talk to and another topic that we haven't discussed. So today, my guest is Dr. Lydia Gray, and she's going to talk about carriage driving. And I'm so excited because this is such an amazing sport, and, and we haven't had anybody to talk about this. So welcome, Lydia. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining. And people probably went, She's a vet, but she's talking about carriage driving. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So Lydia, have you always been in, involved with horses? Were you the horse crazy kid? Oh man. And my parents tried everything. They're like, how about boys? Do I think boys? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't, it didn't work. Um, so I, I got my first horse in the summer between my um, seventh and eighth grade year. So what is that like 13 yeah. or something? Yeah, and then I've owned horses ever since. And um, you know, you start with a great horse who's got a a limp and a like missing one eye and is got a whatever. And then um, uh, have gradually worked my way up to my last horse and my current horse are warmbloods. Oh wow! Yeah. So and then you decided to go to vet school because you wanted to like be more involved in the sport. Well, I I probably knew I was going to be a vet as as soon as I, um, the same time I was horse crazy. I mean, I knew when I was in kindergarten that I was going to vet school. So it relieved a lot of stress of what am I going to do with my life? You know, because I knew right away, then I just had to make it happen. So take all the right classes and get all the right grades and they, you know, extracurriculars and, and practice experience. And so all that. Yeah. Wow. Where'd you go to vet school? Illinois. I L L. Oh. Anybody, there's someone from Chicago land I see. So maybe she, if she's from Illinois also, then she knows the finish of that is I and I. Um, wow. And yeah, and so and I, did, it was, I mean, your career I, was basically set in front of you from kindergarten. Well, y yes and no. Yes, in that I was a uh, veterinarian and I practiced. And then I went, you know, there's a lot more things you can do with a DVM degree. So I did get a master's in communication. Um, but I, I practiced, I went back to the College of Vet Med at Illinois and did some, some works in a graduate program um, teaching. It's kind of like a mini MBA. It, it was a personal and professional leadership program for vets. And then I, I worked for the American Association of Equine Practitioners, AAEP, which I know you know about. Hang on, it's the FedEx guy, keep going. <laughs> okay. And then um, I was executive director of the Hooked Animal Humane Society. So then I went and got into that side of, of equine. And then for years and years and years, I worked for Smart Pack Equine. And, and now I'm off in a new chapter. This is the joy of, of doing webinars in your home with <laughs> animals interrupt well, and FedEx have, questions. <laughs> I'm going to move my video a little bit. I have one cat over here, uh, the cat, and in the close to the urgent box. Yes. And then I have another cat over here. So I'm well surrounded. Oh, that's good. Yeah, mine, mine have, it's rainy and they had some snacks and they've gone to sleep, which is really good because otherwise they, you know, love to interrupt webinars. So, so the, so you actually did, did you actually practice like, like, yeah, mobile? yeah, yeah, I was in a, um, a practice near uh, Peoria, Illinois, which is kind of the center of Illinois. So it was a, what's called a mixed practice where you do everything. I, I tended to focus on horses. I was the only one that did horses. So it was 24 seven equine, but I also saw dogs and cats and exotics. And one day there was an HH in the um, appointment book. And I was like, does anyone know what this is? And no one knew. And so in comes a hedgehog. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I had to call one of my classmates. I'm like, what do I do with a hedgehog? So he kind of coached me. I had him on the phone, like put you on speaker and then just tell me what to do. Cause I had never seen one in real life. Oh, wow. That must've been yeah. fun. Yeah. So yeah, I practice, but I, I enjoy writing and speaking and, and um, I've planned programs for the AVMA, the American Veterinary Medical Association. I've done their, their uh, convention programming. Um, I just marketing. I like all that stuff. Wow. You know, it, it's so much fun to find out what, what, people are up to and that there are other possibilities for careers. Like so many people think that if you're going to be a vet, you got to be, you know, you're in your truck 24 seven at everybody's, but there's other avenues to go into. And, yeah. and this is great. But, um, um, 
that you have explored so many different ideas. And then I know you worked in the corporate world for a while, but where did the driving start? Oh, so um, I think I have the just the personality where I want my my profession to be interesting and be, I want to be cross trained, but I also want my hobby horses to be interesting and versatile and cross trained too. And so I had this wonderful trainer named Newman for Paul Newman, not the Newman on Seinfeld. And um, the, tr- the clinician I was working with, he said, you know, we were doing some ground driving. He was teaching me how to ground drive, which is an amazing skill. Everyone should try to, to learn. It's, it looks hard, but it's actually harder than it looks. Looks Yes. To yeah. do it well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so he told me I didn't do too bad at it. And I should, have I ever thought about driving, like driving, ground driving, but with wheels. And I, and so it was important to me. I had this really nice dressage shorts that, this at that time. Cause I I'm, I'm, when you scrape away all the layers of the onion, I'm a dressage writer. Right. And I didn't want to ruin him by carriage driving. Cause at the time, this is 2008. I didn't know anything about it. Like nothing, like less than nothing. But I found just Googling. I think you could Google back then. I don't know. Yes. 2008. Okay. You could. Okay. I found a local, <laughs> a really local driving club and they were having their annual meeting so i went i took a friend of mine we didn't know anybody we just sat at a table with some people that looked friendly and um i found a trainer who had a background in dressage and but she was a driving trainer and so we i took my horse to her and she came to me we kind of alternated because she was in wisconsin and i was in illinois and, and we started and he took to it like a duck to water and she said are you sure he hasn't been trained? Because there's steps that you take. Right. And you don't want to miss any of them. And he was like, bring it on. Let's do it. And one, you just do it. And he was like, okay, fine. And I said, no, because I've had him since he was unstarted. I know everything he knows. So, oh. so yeah. Maybe That's he was it. born. Was he born in Holland? No. He, <laughs> he's, so he's a trucaner. And when I was looking, I was moving from my off track thoroughbred to a warm blood. And I went all over the country looking at horses, right? And do you know I found him 20 minutes from my house was a major trucaner breeder. And so I bought him at um, at four years of age. They had just pulled him in from the field. They did nothing with their horses till they were four. Oh, nice. And they brought him in and haltered and 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 did just taught him everything. So I took him after 30 days. Uh, we my trainer and I were like just canter him for the first time you young person who bounces when you fall and then we'll we'll take over and she did and he was wonderful and the rest is history wow that is so cool and you know i mean i have done a little bit of driving and um i'm very respectful of driving um i we when i lived in australia and this is the dark ages this was 87 <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would a little pony to harness and we used to drive them into town uh, in a cart, in a little oh. tiny cart. Um, and so, you know, I've done, I've dabbled in, but I, like I said, what I recognize about driving is that it, it's, it looks wonderful and it is so dangerous if you, if something well, it's, goes wrong. It's quite dangerous. And so what I'm working on now is now I have a, a young coming five-year-old Dutch one blood. 17 hands. He's probably going to top out at 17 too. So he's a big boy. Everything has to be custom. <laughs> and we've done everything up to hitching. Yeah. And I'm talking to everyone that I know of uh, to say two wheel cart, four wheel cart, four wheel marathon presentation. What, you know, what do I want behind him for the first times uh, to be safe for him to be safe uh, for me to be safe, you know, and to have, I don't want, if I scare him at this time, it, it, it could be, it could, we could be done. Right. I see a comment that minis are the best. Um, we need, should, is it time to start the PowerPoint? Cause I, I have actually a picture of a mini. Okay. Yeah, we can okay, go there. Oh, right. wait, I got to make you co-host. I forgot to do that. Hang on. Okay. Do, you know, and I live near um, Upperville, Middleburg and Upperville. And I remember one day they had the coaches, they had the four in hand coaches that they went oh. the road and over to the, yeah. at, oh my God, that is so amazing. Um, so amazing. inexpensive. 
Yes. Coaching oh, yeah. is a, <laughs> this is like a, yeah, a small Got fortune. You. So this is my Newman that I was telling you about. This is us at a show because this is a dressage ring. I think it was either a combined test or a driving trial in Illinois. Um, but this is my presentation carriage that I bought from an Amish company in Pennsylvania. It's beautiful. So it's all handmade, walnut stained. Um, so look, there he is. Uh, there he is. Look. My <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> and, and that's the thing about driving. Like you can spend a gazillion dollars, but you can also have a pony cart. Right. And I think that that's as long as it's safe. Yeah. And there's some face, there's lots of Facebook groups. There's one that I belong to called a uh, beginning carriage driving. And so if you're interested, I'd recommend um, joining that group. There's all kinds of questions about like, let me see if I have a, a cursor. Can you see these tires? Yeah. Okay. They're what's called pneumatic. They're air filled. And those can be not safe. And so when you show, you have to make sure that you can, that they're fine to show in. But when you are also just driving recreationally, like on trails, you want to make sure that if, if you go with a pneumatic tire, that, that that's, that's safe. So um, is it beginner carriage driving the Facebook group? Beginner carriage driving. Let me just look to make sure. I think that's what it's called. Yep. Cause I just popped that up in the chat. Did yeah, it come up? Okay. It's, um, you know, that's what I, you know, it's, it's like anything in this sport, you can, you can do that at a low level and have just so much fun, or you can do that at a really high level and spend a lot of money and still have a lot of fun. <laughs> Beginning carriage driving. The thing about carriage driving, the takeaway from today is you've got to be safe. So don't start your horse yourself. If you've never done it, um, take lessons volunteer volunteering is a great way to meet people and learn about a sport and to even decide if you want to do it um make sure anything you buy tack harness uh, a, a car carriage anything a cart is is safe and um like i, I just saw on a, another group i joined people were selling these old leather draft horse harnesses they found in their grandfather's barn well don't buy that unless you plan on hanging on your wall because it's very unsafe, it'll fall apart. So, but you've got to work with a professional to learn these things before you get in. Cause you, you and your horse could get really hurt, really bad, really easy. So let's see, we talked about how I got started. Uh, we'll talk about how the horses get started. I wanna cover the disciplines within driving because I don't think people understand that there's combined driving, which is what I do. Cause I have a dressage ridden horse. There's, there's pleasure, pleasure driving competition, and then there's recreational driving. You mentioned coaching. That's its own sort of thing. Um, and then terminology, the jargon, the lingo. Oh my gosh. It takes years to be comfortable with some of the words that they use so that you don't sound, so that you sound like, oh, you know what you're doing <laughs> because. So, oh, but first you want to watch a video? Oh yeah. Okay, let's watch a video. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We'll 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 go on, but let's try it. Um, oh, so wait, before I do that, um, if I want to if I want to have sound on it, I have to go back and unshare and click on that. But I don't think we need sound on this. So let's just watch it. Okay. okay. So fingers crossed. Come on, play. Wonder if I can make it bigger. Oh yeah, and it looks like there was oh. sound. And it's, it goes on and on. So you just tell me when you get bored, but I'll try to point out some things like those horses are wearing full collars and you, I'll point out a breast collar here soon. Oh, great overhead view. There's a breast collar. See the difference? Yeah. Yep. Breast collars, breast collars. So those are called foreign hands. Here's some ponies, probably Dartmoors. She's she's showing the one-handed driving. That's collars on those, right? I didn't see them. Oh, the bay, the four bays. There's so much to look at. Yeah. Notice the pairs don't have shafts on the outside. They have a pole in between. There's a single with shafts. See the pole in between the wheelers? The wheelers are the ones closest to the wheels 
Look at the reins. That's Chester Weber, by the way. Driving four horses with one hand. All right, so now we come to the phase that everyone likes, the marathon. The person on the back is called your navigator. With the four in hand, you need two people on the back. With the pair of single, you just need one. Do you see the, the letters? A, yep. B, C, D, E, F. It's just like eventing. Red on the right, white on the left. Oh, another great overhead shot. How long does it take to train a four in hand to, to, to this level, roughly? I don't know if you saw that single there. See the shaft where it ends? It's not a long wooden pointy shaft. It's got a loop at the end. So this is phase three. This is the cones. And you notice on top of the yellow cones is an orange. Well, it changes, but there's a ball on top. So that's how the judge knows if you rubbed the cone because the ball falls down. And it's time. So he was racing to the finish. Depending on your level, if you're beginning level, training level, you can only trot. But once you get to preliminary and then intermediate and advanced, you can canter and gallop. And there's Chester. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Awesome. So, so how, roughly how long does it take to train a foreign hand to that level? Well, don't ask me any questions about foreign hands because I've okay. never even driven one. I've oh. driven a pair and I've driven a pair of minis, which is great. Great way to learn because if something happens, you could just put your foot out Fred Flintstone style and stop <laughs> and go, everybody calm down. Um, I have a friend who's invited me. She lives in um, Aiken, South South Carolina. Yep. Yeah. To come visit and drive her pair of Morgans. Oh. So that'll be a step up. But so, I mean, my goal someday, I thought my bucket list to drive a four in hand. But, you know, very few women drive full-size horse or warm blood four in hands because it takes a lot of strength. Yeah. You know, and I still hear sound. I think that's me. Let me go close. Oh yeah, here. Oh, sorry. I'm like, what is the sound in the background? <laughs> um, so I want to mention these organizations with people are they, you know, I want to leave here with people getting some good resources. So can, that you, was from can you start US your Equestrian. slideshow again? So it's big because right now it's oh, your yep. practice mode. There we go. Perfect. Uh, Just have to uh, a little bit. There we go. It was equestrian, the American Driving Society or ADS. There's the Carriage Association of America, CAA. And these all have wonderful educational components to them. For example, the Carriage Association of America has this thing called a driver proficiency exam. And I'm a level one. So they have evaluators that are trained and, and certified. They come in, um, it's about a 90 minute or two hour test. They, there's an oral part where they ask you questions. Then there's hands-on and for the basic level, they want, they want horsemen. They don't want, just want carriage drivers. So you have to load a hay net, groom a horse, tie a quick release knot, pick a foot. Uh, you have to do some hands-on horseman things, pick a stall. Um, the question they, I wasn't prepared for was, how do you put out a barn fire? Name three ways. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I got it. But, you know, they talked about blanketing and, um, what, what do you vaccinate horses for? What, what do you deworm them for? So they want to have general knowledge. Then they, they quiz you about carriage, the carriage and the harness. How do, you, how do you make sure a harness fits a horse? How do you decide if you're gonna go with a neck collar, full collar or a breast collar? Um, what's an appropriate carriage for you know, this, this kind of horse? So, and then there's a, of course a hands-on driving component too. So that's, that's the Carriage Association of America, but everybody is all about education 
and safety. And that includes your local club. So these are the two that I'm a member of, committee member of, board of director, all that. So you want, if you join, you want to get involved too, because that's where you'll learn the most and meet the most people and have a good time. They have driving people are all about their potlucks. <laughs> oh my gosh. Co COVID call, you know, for two years, we didn't have potlucks. We're going to have a potluck on May 7th, the Dairyland Driving Club. So everyone's already planning. What am I going to take? Oh, wow. Oh. This is right, your so horse, Newman. I recognize him. That is Newman. Thank you. He's gorgeous. You know, he's a picture Isn't... of his head. He's got that, that Arab uh, tricaner, very typey head. But so there's, there's me ground driving him. And he was such a good pony. I say pony. He was 17 hands. Um, but this was our first show. He's stiff. I'm stiff. This is a little breaking cart. I mean, we were a hot mess, but I wanted to show. So my trainer said, all right, you know, you're safe. You're doing, it's, everything's good. Let's get out there. So there we are. And then he, here's us towards the end with wow. a medium trot. I mean, cause this is my dressage horse, you know, round on the bit contact and then extend the trot. And this was us at a clinic. Uh, I, I took every lesson and every opportunity for a clinic that I could. I, and I see a lot of drivers that don't, they just, I don't know, they just get driving and they're like, I think I know everything I'm done. Nope. There's always more to learn. That's, you know, doesn't matter what it is. There's always more to learn. And our hub club has a annual spring clinic and we bring in a different clinician every year. So I've taken lessons with um, Larry Poulin, Muffy Seaton, Sterling Grayburn, John Greenall. I mean, and I've learned something from every single person. And John Greenall was a, a pleasure driver. And, and I was a, I'm a combined driver, but I still got a lot out of hearing from him. So then this is my five-year-old that were, this was a picture from two nights ago. This is my trainer in the front leading him. This is me in the back, making sure that the, the tire drag makes the corners. Um, so we're teaching him noise that there's something chasing him from behind that, that he has to walk on even when he, there, he feels pressure on his chest. So we're teaching him to lean in and pull. And he was a trooper. So when you think about it, just this picture alone, when you think about it, the number of things that we're asking the horse to override in this instinctive behavior, one, run away from something loud and noisy behind you, to you know, push into something as opposed to go away from it. Those right. are huge. And this, this is one of the last steps before driving. It took many, many, many steps before this. Like I put each piece of the harness on separately and got him used to it. I mean, just wearing the crupper is a big deal. He didn't care, but a lot of horses do. Um, having things down around, look where that trace is right there is not touching but it's going to eventually i made sure that drag i had a lead rope on it i swung it and i made sure those traces hit his hocks because i don't want the first time something hits his hocks when i'm hitched to him but we're connected and I, we have wheels uh-uh <laughs> um we took small diameter light pvc poles and put in the tugs tugs are me and my cursor again here it is the tugs are here um, they're the things that hold the shafts up on a single horse and made sure that if we put wood against his ribs, he would not freak out about it. And, and that's how they turn. So in fact, when he turned, I pushed this shaft, shaft, fake shaft against him to make sure he learned your, your turning, you're pushing the shaft away. And that's, what's making the whole unit turn. Um, I took one day before we hooked this up, I held both these traces with the same lead rope and she walked him. And as she walked, I put one, two, three, I kept putting more and more pounds against him so that he, before this drag happened, he knew even though there's pulling on my chest, I'm supposed to keep walking. So, so he's, yeah. he's five now, is that what you said? He'll be five in June. Yep. And, and when did you start his driving training? When he was two. So he's been at this for three years. I'm just well, trying to... This stuff just 
to spring. But I mean, to me, driving training, that was a trick, not a trick question, a trick answer. Driving training is ground handling. It is making them stand. The driving horse, the number one thing the driving horse has to do is stand. It takes, back to the forward hand, I, I do know this, it takes a long time to put two or to hitch four horses to a carriage. Yes. And so when you put the wheelers on, they have to stand there while you bring up the leaders and do the same thing with them. So we've been working on standing ever since I've owned him. We've been working on leading, on walk and trot and woe. We, I've been lunging, He's, he knows his words. So that when I get in the cart and drive, I can tell him walk, trot, canter, woe, whoop, trot. I can tell, I've got a, a repertoire of words that he knows so that we can go on. Yeah. So, but, but now I've been stepping up because I'm hoping to hitch him in a month or two. Oh. So, I mean, and that's just really great to know that, you know, it's, this is a lifelong process of communication that's spe that has specific and required behaviors it, for the safety and welfare of everybody involved with it. Yeah. And I, I take into account his personality. When I got him, he was not very emotional and emotionally intelligent. And he's a very, very calm horse, which is why I think he can make a nice driving horse. But he would get overstimulated easily. And he had a threshold. And it was, you could absolutely see if it was windy and there were cats and there were other people and a horse got loose. All those things would add up and hit his limit. And then he was like, Mom! you know, so over the years we've been building up. So now instead of two things setting him off, it takes 12 things stacked mm -hmm. up to have him before he loses it. And eventually he won't lose it. Right. He will look to me for what should I do? And I'll be like, you should stand there. So it's, it's exactly like you say, it's a, it's a lifetime of just building up physical and mental. And there's, I mean, there, there's obviously some horses that have a better temperament toward driving than others. Mm -hmm. They always say you can drive every breed. There are some breeds who are bred for it, right? Um, and then there are other breeds that they can do it. It just, it's a little bit more, takes a little bit more planning and effort. And, and but then there are some horses who, I don't care what breed you are. They're just not, it's just not their cup of tea. They don't, they don't like it, but we knew, we knew when we started the very first thing we did with my, uh, Trocaner, he loved it. And if I pulled him out and he could see the harness was hanging up, he was like, yay, it's a driving day because I would drive like twice a week. And then, um, arena, twice and then jump once and then go for a trail ride so that was his week it was very versatile and towards the end i introduced side saddle but that's a different yeah that's a whole different. nother story <laughs> do you want to watch another video sure okay this one this is a boyd excel who i think is from australia um and he is at the top of the sport and you'll you'll see why and this is a a um discipline and we'll we'll talk about disciplines next called uh, driving derbies which is new but really have taken off because um it's just a it's just a good venue and format and uh, drivers across the disciplines and across levels and across breeds love driving derbies and i think i think you will see why here so let's watch this There we go. Uh oh, we have to watch one of these first. Okay. Skip ads. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Can you hear it? No. Uh -uh. All right, then let's do this. This one you need to hear because it's good. So I think what I have to do, I have to stop share. And then when I share, there's a little box down here. I click share sound. Do it again. 
Now you should be able to hear as I start it. Bajon, oh, yeah. Barney, Demi Rocket, yeah. one, two, three. Emma Olsen, Hugh Scotty Barretti, the uh, backstepper. Oh, yeah. Emma just behind him, Hugh right on the back there. Been part of the team for a number of years. 1-3-1-21 was his first round time. I reckon he's going to smash it. I think oh, he's going to go tight, absolutely sitting down. foot to the boards and do what he does best. And that is win, win, win. He's won five legs already. He is through to the final for sure in Bordeaux. This is breathtakingly fast. This is incredible. Over the bridge for three. And now the work starts. Bore, he knows where he's going. The backsteppers know where they're going. The groom knows where they're going. They've just got to lean into it. Round, 360, 360. Turn, wow. turn, 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 turn. How does he do it? How does he <laughs> How make does these he turns do it? so incredibly easy? is because he look at the people on the back works practices hours and hours and hours and there's a he, lot to look at but watch the he's watch already the people through now we now we now we come on come on come on boys come wow. on boys. away five up to the top end he's still clear he was very nervous of that ball at five but they're through it six down to the bottom end this is incredible across the arena. Seven, bottom end, eight. Is he faster? I think he's faster than the time before. Remember, going up there, 89 seconds. Going into nine, 89. He is eight seconds up on the clock. Eight seconds up on the clock on Kuz Durons, who hit nine at 89 seconds. This is going to be incredible. Wow. The way those C horses lean into the turns. D. I can't oh drive a single goodness. like this. He can't drive in four. Uh, there he goes. There he goes. Ooh. There he goes. Wow. The crowd are cheering him on. He is a first favorite here. This is even faster than before. He's going up over the bridge. 119. It's going to be in the low 20s, mid 20s. It's going to be under 30. It's going to be under 30. Boyd XL, 129, 130.17. He is world number one. Oh, yeah. He has won Ooh. the Where World is, Cup is he, title is he of Great Britain? Three... Uh, Australia. Australia. Yeah. You, you know, um, I, I've had the, the, I've been to Equitana three times and the last time um, was in 19 and they had four in hands doing a demo with, four foreign hands in an arena doing a drill pattern at speed these oh. guys are amazing i know i took that 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 picture i showed you with newman doing the extended trot that clinic was with um sterling grayburn and he was great he helped me the most with my uh, marathon obstacles so the next day we did we were outside and doing um not cones but obstacles and he said there's a saying in driving if you're not rubbing you're not racing so, so the and I'm a dressage rider. I did not come from the eventing background. A lot of drivers come from the eventing background, and so they're really brave. Not that dressage riders aren't brave, but I don't. What's exciting to me is the canter pirouette. One type of changes. I don't need to like galloping is not where I get my adrenaline rush, you know. But so here's the disciplines. You recognize this works, right, Wendy? You did it before. Uh, the Newman. That's Newman. Yeah. But he's got uh, blinkers notice, on now. Yep. Yeah, what do you notice about the bridle and the reins? What do I notice about the bridle and the reins? Well, it's a driving bit, but, a, but it looks like a dressage bridle with a cabestan. And the reins are way at the top, so you don't have a lot of leverage on them. Very good. But the reins are also brown. Yes. Yeah. They are brown. And that's, that's a, a driving tradition. And it's, there's no need for it anymore. But it, it was back in the day when we didn't want black, black reins were, were, you know, stained, right? They were made black with, oh. and you didn't want the reins to stain your gloves. So rain, driving reins were always brown. And Interesting. It's just, something, it's just something that has been maintained through the centuries. Just like we also, and when we drive, 
in the US, we sit on the right. So now when you look at people driving horses and there's, no, if there's not, look, the driver sits on the right. And the, the saying with that is, why do carriage drivers sit on the right? The better to smack their passengers with. <laughs> wah, wah. Okay, so I just wanted to point out this, um, disciplines within driving. So the combined driving at the bottom, let's start at the bottom. You see Derby. So that's what we just saw Boyd Excel doing. That's a driving Derby. And then a CDE is called a combined driving event. And it's the longest and fullest. It's like the three day eventing, the um, traditional format. So it has different sections of, of endurance. And it, but it, the, it, the main thing is it has day one dressage, day two marathon, day three cones. So it's the same format as three day eventing. It's just no jumping. <laughs> or less jumping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the step down from a CDE is a driving trial. And that has dressage, cones, and a shorter marathon. Okay. And then a step down from a, that is a combined test that has just dressage and cones. And you can do that in one day. An arena trial can be, a, an arena driving trial can be dressage, and cones and obstacles, but in an arena. Okay. So it's not a marathon across country. It's every, it's, you have, you have two goals. There's, there's generally an arena, two obstacles. You have a go at A, you have a go at B, and then you do them again. Oh, okay. At a better your time. And, and obviously that takes a whole lot less space than like a full, full on. And season. a whole lot less volunteers. Yes. It is really hard to put on a CDE. We yeah. used to have a beautiful, a wonderful CDE in Illinois, and it just got to the land and the obstacles and, and also the expense of the judges because you have to have a, a very high level judge and a very high level technical, technical delegate or TD. And it was just, it was just too much. Um, so then other disciplines, you have driven dressage, which I'm currently, I'm, I'm a licensed official in. I'm an L getting my small R. Um, and there's pleasure driving. And you might think of it's pleasure driving competition, not pleasure driving like down the road. That's, that's up here, that's recreation, recreational driving. This is pleasure driving competition. And that's ring classes. It's obstacle classes or cones. They also have their own version of a cross country. It is not, um, I'll, I'll use the British term, pell-mell. <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is more sedate. It is, it is a, you're trying to hit a window of time and you're going to trot. Pleasure driving competition is walking and trotting. There's no cantering. There's even sleigh rallies. Wow. These are super fun. Do you know what the, instead of cones, can you guess what they use for their obstacles? Snowmen. <laughs> That's a good guess. I'll give you a hint. It's the, a lot of these happen in January, the month after the holidays. Oh, Christmas trees. <laughs> Christmas trees. And how beautiful. So beautiful. Um, so go back for a second. Cause you skipped, yeah. you skipped, uh, what is continuous driving? I think continuous drive is, and again, I'm not a pleasure driving competition person, but it's not what it, what you think it means. Okay. Um, it's not continually driving. It, it has something to do with, um, I'm, you know what, let's do this. Let's, um, well, I'll, I'll tell you where to find it. For those people who are interested in continuous driving, what it is, the rules of it, go to the American Driving Society website find their rule book, and then you can um, control F, search for continuous and read all about it. Okay. But I don't do it. And I'll, I'll tell you, I normally read the rule book beginning to end, beginning of each season, but because I'm um, working towards my judge's license in driven dressage, I am not reading anything but that because there's a lot of rules in driving. And pleasure driving competition rules 
are different than combined driving modes. Ah, okay. So like there's cones in both pleasure driving and combined driving, but the penalties for knocking the ball off are different. And like at, at the, the prelim level of combined driving, you can canter the cones. You better not canter here because that's a penalty. And you just, I tend to read the rules before every competition to have them fresh in my mind. And I keep the rule book with me. Yeah. Uh, here are some classes I do know about. So combination classes, super fun. Those are your ride and drives. Like oh, back in the old days when the, the guy uh, hitched his, his driving horse to the front of the, the carriage to the gig, right? Or the curricle, and then put his hunter, tied him to the back, and then went down the road to a, a hunt, to fox hunt. Then the, sure, the driving horse got warmed up, but he neither pulled, sorry, the riding horse got warmed up, but he didn't pull or carry the rider. So he was warmed up at fresh for the hunt. So then he would go ride the horse in the hunt and, and, and jump. So there's even a class where you have one horse and Newman could do this, that you, you drove around the ring, both directions, walk, trot, and then you met your groom in the middle and you unhitched, you saddle, and then you ride, walk, trot, canter, and then you take two jumps. Oh, wow. And that's your class. Wow. Um, do you know what the most fun and favorite, most popular <laughs> class is? Look at this little guy, carriage dog. Wow. So she's got a gray horse here, a white horse. So she brought her little Bichon and she dressed him all up. So she, <laughs> they all match. Um, but there's even a picnic class where the class is, you might have, a, let's say, here's sort of an ideal thing. You have a pair of horses because you, you're bringing your friends out for picnic. So you have like you and a couple of girlfriends and you would have a groom that sits on maybe the dicky seat and you have a wicker basket with your picnic stuff in it and you drive around the ring a little bit, but then you stop, your groom gets out and heads the horse, you know, stands at the front and then you and your girlfriends lay out your, your blanket and have a picnic. That's a class. <laughs> Do they judge you by the sandwiches that you bring? <laughs> um they judge you for your turnout okay i mean does everything go together so what would not go together if you have a very very hot horse you wouldn't take your hot horse on a picnic right. because he's supposed to stand with the groom while you enjoy some some chicken and and you know potato salad and a little sherry yeah so that 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 wouldn't that turn out wouldn't score well because you didn't bring the right horse right you know um this pleasure obstacle driving classes gambler's choice is fun they have a they'll have about a dozen different um they're almost obstacles so they'll be like a a, um a u-shape that you have to drive around there'll be a, a, my favorite is they'll have a cone laying on its side and you have to drive over it such that your wheel sets the cone up right. Oh, wow. Yeah, they'll have a bell to ring. One of, a, <laughs> there's a driving show in Wisconsin that they have a, a bar, a bar and a drink on it, a Sarsa Perilla. <laughs> and you have to go stop stand reach and grab the drink and drink it and put it back down and then drive off <laughs> the, these all sound like they've come from when driving was uh, a necessity and things like being able to go in for a picnic or you know stop and get a drink while you're traveling were all necessities like stop and get the mail yeah you know yeah yeah so yeah um, so just, I want to run through just a couple words. Um, I think I mentioned a foreign hand is what we would refer to 
like board Excel's team. A tandem is uh, also known as a wet noodle, is a, a, a wheeler, so a horse right in front of a carriage, and then a horse out in front. Oh, in line. Yeah. Yeah. And again, another way to bring your horse to the hunt where the front horse is doing no work. They're connected, but the traces are loopy. So he's not pulling at all. And you're, if you look at a tandem, the front horse is the exciting, attractive, leggy, fancy horse. And the wheelers, the, the stouter, heavier, bigger boned, he's the muscle. Um, and the unicorn, like it, two wheelers and one in front. Right. But that horse in front, um, I mean, you really, I, I have actually not on my bucket list to ever drive a tandem. Yeah. Because let me count the ways you can get in, into trouble. I mean, they can turn around and look at you. Yes. <laughs> and I've been to many a clinic and show where they do just that. They're like, hey, how's it going? Yeah, that's, that's a mess. Um, the whip is obviously, you know, the whip that you use to communicate with. But in driving, the person, the driver is also called the whip. Did you know that? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're, you can talk about someone and say, my goodness, that whip sure knows his horses. And you can sound like, you know, what you're talking about. Okay. Likewise, turnout has a couple of meanings. Um, it, it can mean your turnout. So what your horse is wearing, does the carriage meet, match the, the harness? You know, the people who are really into it, the bits you, you wear, your horses wear a certain bit based on the kind of carriage and harness you have, and even the shape of the blinders. Oh. There's square blinders, there's rounded blinders, that all matches. And your lamps, your lamp has to match the kind, because there's fancy carriages, and then there's more workmanlike wagons or wagonettes. The kind of carriages are astounding. There's governess carts, there's um, breaking carts, there's there's dog carts. I mean, there's just, you have to think of it as back in the day, they had as many types of carriages as we have cars today. Sure. So for, there's for all different price yeah. ranges and styles yeah. and purposes. Yeah. Studebaker was a very prominent uh, manufacturer of carriages. Oh, wow. But we know Studebaker as a car maker. Right. I mean, not so much anymore, but they used to be. Right. So, and, and carriage makers, manufacturers in the 1800s and 1900s, they were big names. And so when we go look at carriage collections now it, in museums and it, people, there are people who have carriage collections in their carriage houses. Um, there's, there's big names that are plaques, you know, screwed onto the carriage and you're like, oh, wow, that's a, that's a so-and-so and, and you know and so it's big bucks um but the other the other meaning of turnout is um is if if you're somewhere and you see a horse hitched to a carriage and a person you're like oh look at that turnout aren't they lovely so you use the term turnout to refer to the whole the package oh wow okay like you might say uh, I've been a ring store to care at, at pleasure shows and I, and I might walkie talkie in, uh, there are six turnouts in this class. Oh, and, or we're waiting for one more turnout. So put two means to hitch, um, parts of the harness. We've talked about a lot of these breaching traces, territory. Oh, so some people call them blinders. Some call them blinkers. Some even call them winkers. Um, the, the name for the part of the harness that makes it this way, that goes behind the withers, that has the tug loops, that the shafts come up through, that has the girth, that's called a saddle. Oh, yes, that's right. Yep. Um, cart is a two wheel, carriage is a four wheel. And then if you're at a pleasure driving show and there's a, um, a person sitting behind the driver would be more correct. It's a groom and they hop out and head the horse, you know, in your lineup. 
if the person sitting next to you, they're a passenger and they have to be properly attired. So the driver has to wear gloves and something on their head, more and more wear helmets now, and an apron or a lap robe. If you're at a pleasure driving show and you're a passenger, you also have to wear a lap robe because that you're in the front behind a dashboard, dash, and it, it protects you from uh, the dirt and it may be wet. Oh. So you have, because if you're going to church, you want to get to church or you're going wherever you're going, you want to get there clean. So you wear an, an apron to cover your clothes. You know, and in the end, all of this stuff has a functional meaning behind it. And we've in many ways lost what the function is because we're not doing this as a as the way we get around. Right, right. I remember when I was first getting, I, I started Newman with that ugly, awful braking cart. And then we, we moved up to a, a really nicely made, Amish made, walnut stained uh, two wheel. And I didn't like the two wheel right away, but um, the guy that built it came out because I was having trouble fitting it to my horse. And we ended up going, exchanging it for a four wheel. But while he was out here, he would, he would we, we hooked Newman up, we drove it and he goes, oh, I see the problem. We unhitched, he turned the cart over, made some adjustments, flipped it back up and he hitched again. And this was when I was new, but I, I don't know that I'm much faster. It, you know, it takes me 10 minutes to put a horse to. And this guy, Amish, this horses and carriages are his cars, right? He wants to go to town and get a loaf of bread. He's got to harness and hitch a horse. He had, he had that thing hitched in like 60 seconds wow. and was up in it, hopped up in it and took off. And I was like, wow, you're fast. He goes, but he says, it's, is, I don't put thought into this. Like when you get in your car and you turn the key, look how fast you are at that. Yeah. He says, you close the door, you lock it, you put your seatbelt on, you turn the car, you, you're you gone. And I, I would be like, step one, <laughs> you know, he says, so, so it's the same. And he's probably him. been doing it since he, since he could, since he was little, right? Exactly. As soon as he could lift the harness. Exactly. So, so, uh, but, but that said, uh, there's a, a code that the drivers have. I don't talk to people when I am harnessing or hitching because I don't want to be distracted and you do everything in order. And there is a, there's even a class. Yes. You knew that there was a class, a putting to class where you show the judge that, you know, the order of things to hook up and, and then that the order of things as you unhook and it's all about safety. Yeah. And so one of the big things is, um, you never unhitch a horse you, you never take the bridle off a horse that is hitched. Yeah. That's extremely dangerous. Yeah. yeah. So order, the correct order of putting to and taking away is, is extremely important. But yeah, because, and everything has a meaning. So um, do you want to, do we have time for one more video? Oh, yes, for sure. Okay. This, so this is Chester Weber. Um, is there anything I want to point out here? So these are passengers, or actually these are grooms, and he's doing the cones phase. But just look how put together he is. And here's one of those things. You never know. There's a, there's a meaning behind the gray hat. So what the gray means is that he owns these horses. He, if he wore a black hat, it would mean these are somebody else's horses he's driving them. Oh, wow. And I don't know that you can see it. You can't see it here, but um, the pole between the wheelers, which if, if it was just a pair, you'd see the pole there, they, it connects, uh, it connects in this area. I think that strap right there, probably. If it's leather, if the strap is leather, it means one thing. If the strap is chains, it means another. Like owner versus. Oh. Yeah. So it, and. These kind of bits go with this kind of carriage. So no, it's I'm interesting thinking, the horse on the left is in a snaffle. Uh-huh. I wonder if you noticed that. And then this horse, there, there is a bar across yeah. here. Yep. So that none of these lines 
can get in here and get tangled up. You don't oh, want, you don't want okay. one of these it keeps it up. Sure. Yeah, you don't you don't want to rain on the inside of his shank. Right. And then looking at this carriage, see these this grill here? Yep. That means that's where they put their hunting dogs. Oh. So so this is a kind of carriage. And I'm sure it was, I'm sure Chester Weber drives nothing but restored carriages. In the 1800s, this would have been a um, a car, a carriage that you took to the hunt and you put your dogs in here. And this was this was their mentalation. Wow. Yeah, there's just, I mean- So many so, details. Oh, so many details. And I haven't even scraped the surface. So, but let's watch this. Um, and I think I have it set up for sound. Okay. 8.26. Hi, I'm Matt Damon, co-founder of water.org. We're two, here to bring water and sanitation. Here we go. Okay. Got his marathon team a little bit hung up in the first water. He finished fourth in that water. Can you hear it? Then yep. The rest of them winning some of the... Uh, now, what marathon. breed are these? They're Dutch Warmbloods. Seconds. Okay. These are full-size Dutch Warmbloods. A lot of people will drive Dutch harness horses, but I believe... Chester has Dutch Individual Warmbloods. Individual silver medal and team gold at trial. Look, so he's advanced. Games. There are yeah. centimeters between the horses See, and the cones. In Europe over the centimeters. Driving the World Cup series. And his passengers just yeah. sit yeah. like yeah. they're. These are grooms. Groom. These are grooms. Yeah. So when he stops, um, they will get out and head the horses. But I mean, they, I mean, they, they look frozen. <laughs> yeah, think about this. What you're supposed to be seeing here is a gentleman from the past in England, nobility, right? This is a this is a, a, a lord something. And he's taken out his his uh, team for a jolly good day drive. And he's having a bit of fun. He's, he's got a bet that he's going to win faster than his friends. And he had to bring, he brought his two grooms along. Okay. So these are just grooms from the, the stable, but look how smartly they're dressed. Yes. And, and I love the base of the neck, especially on the, on the, uh, uh, near side lead horse. He's these horses are really up through their backs, through their withers. The intelligence these leaders so, looking all the time for that wheel horses too. Going next. Chester just moves it up a little bit here as well. Letting the leaders run right through that cone, just increasing the risk of course, but just taking away the chance of time penalties brings it all back under a little bit more control. So imagine how difficult it is to get four horses Again, that are matched in height between the show jumps, and way of going. Sort of ask, is that where you Color want to is go? not as important, but they can't have different uh, lengths of strides or even thrust. About two minutes, 15 right. seconds. Right. To the second slalom. They have to pull That's evenly. Their chest, the chest par, of the leaders, one hundred and eighty-five should be seconds the time even, allowed, so and the chest of the wheelers should Chester be. Even. Might pick up a couple of time penalties, but at the moment, still on zero zero. And you always have a spare, also. This is a very tight part of the course. It was tight enough for the singles and pairs. The horse teams having how a, how very, very many hard. days a week would these horses uh, pull? Back. Don't want to get caught up in number Again, 10. look at you asking forehand yeah, questions. Sort of uh, <laughs> I'll tell you you're showing his forehand. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how well. often uh, he'll work them as a team. No at all for he'll work them Just as singles and pairs. Choosing his line to this parallel. And, and I believe his horses so even get ridden. Just going to miss the there are some things. Look how close. The time allowed. Yeah. He picks up the there are some things that you... all the way to the line. One eighty-eight. One. And look at his apron. One point five six penalties. Is all oh yeah. Today. Yeah. Well, I'm just looking at the the top lines on these horses, and you can see that they've been ridden. Well, I don't know that they've been ridden, but um, what am I trying to say? I've seen some horses when they pull and they pull pushing with their chest and short in their in their back, and Hollow, those horses yeah. were through their top lines. And yeah. So oh yeah. Happens. Well, they're and they're at the advanced level. They're the top level. So he goes to the World Equestrian Games. He goes to the World Driving Championships. He represents the U.S. So his horses are top awesome. of the line as far as uh, breeding, pedigree, and and training. And so there's things that you can only teach them, or that you can teach them best. Let's say it that way. Uh, riding, right. and then when they're 
when they're in the four in hand setup, you know, you can't work on stuff. That's not schooling, that's performance. So you, you, um, you hitch them as pairs and singles to work on things that like you might see that let's, we didn't see it, but let, let's pretend that his, um, so you go near and off. So near means left and off means right. So let's say his off leader, the front right horse uh, was counterbending. You know, the horse, the shame. And so he would take that horse and either ride or single drive it and practice getting him on the outside rein and suppling to the left inside rein to make sure that he didn't counterbend. So that was, you can't work on that when they're four hands. So the, my point is the, pre, the predominant, the predominance of his training during the week is fixing schooling, is training not in the four in hand setup. Got it. Yeah. So some, this is, somebody's um, asked a question and it's a good question. What does it mean when the, when you see a, a hitched group of horses and there's a rider on the, some of the horses that are hitched? Yeah, it's called postillion. And the last time I saw it was when um, Megan and Harry got married. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just a, another way of, of putting to and of driving because if, if you notice sometimes uh, when it's a postillion setup, there won't, the carriage is, is such that they only have the passengers in it and there's no place in the front for a driver. Oh. And so they might have to only ride like that. Okay. Yeah. So this is me driving Newman. I'm heading into an uh, obstacle. Because you can see that C, letter C up there? Yep. Okay. The obstacle was round bales. Um, and it was in a berm. Of, you know, the, the berm was on the side. So it was a little bit like a narrow bowling alley. Um, but you, when you're training, you have to go through A, B, C in the correct order. Prelim level goes through A, B, C, D. Intermediate goes through A, B, C, D, E. And advanced does all of them. And you have to go through... Uh, uh, entrance and exit markers. Joyce Carrig raised a hand. This is so fun. Yeah, um, I usually don't have people that. Joyce, can you pop in the chat? She just put her hand up. If you if you pop in the chat, it's a little easier. We'll see. She might have just hit a button by accident. Okay. Uh, did you read this text down here at the bottom? I was starting to read that. Let's see. Um, are you going to read it out loud? I can. The first one is, and these are all quotes by Muffy. Driving horses want to know where to go and how fast to go 100% of the time. So they're up there by themselves, if they're single, in blinkers. And you've got, you, you have got to maintain connection with the lines and talking with the voice and touching them with the whip and say, go here at this speed, do this all the time. Um, so two big differences between driven dressage and ridden dressage is in ridden dressage, you know, you don't, you can't speak to your horse in the right. test. You get points off in driven dressage. Um, not only can you, you're expected to now there's, there's, you're not supposed to yell at them <laughs> and you're not supposed to keep up a continuous chatter, but like, if it's C, I'm walking and, and it says pick up the trot at C, you're gonna all the judges are gonna hear and trot <laughs> right when they're supposed to. So that's perfectly fine. Um I had two things I was gonna tell you difference. Well, I mean there's lots of differences between the ridden and, and driven, but I forgot the second one. The next one is driving is like teaching Chinese in braille through the mouth. And that's just a testament to like you said at the very beginning, how difficult it is um, and, and why it, everything is baby steps. Do you know, when I first started, I found it difficult to change rain. So at the try, uh, so I could, I could, I would go around, let's say to the right clockwise trotting. And then she would say, all right, now cross the diagonal and go the other way. Nope, I had to stop it. I had to break to the walk at X and just get my bend changed. I couldn't change the bend 
at the trot. I, I couldn't yet. It took me, that took several months. Um, and then the last one is driving is like walking across boulders with the blindfold on surrounded by sharks. So, oh, I know what the other difference was. You know, in the um, in the lower levels, ridden dressage has a, a free walk at a long rain. Yep. You can, you're supposed to sort of feed out the rain and, and show a loop. Like and, right. and your horse is supposed to stretch to it and show that you have your basics. You never put the driving horse on a loose rein. You always have, it's a long rein. So it's a, it's a free walk at a long rein. You push the reins at them like broomsticks, but you don't ever, they never get loopy because right. it's not safe. Right. Yeah. And then they don't know where you are. It's like, and they don't know where you are and they can't see, they don't know. They got, bl they got blinkers on. So they're like, uh Oh, I'm a bit, I've been abandoned. Yeah. Right. Right. So there you have it. I think that's everything. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great. I, this is so much fun. And I, I, I <laughs> love, I mean, I've, I love watching driving because it is such an amazing to, to the, the agility, the timing, the skill level is it's really fun. So even if you never are interested in driving your horse, going to a driving competition and watching it live and seeing mm -hmm. the talent that these people have and the dedication. Oh, that was the other, there was one really other super fun act at Equitana and it was all pony carts, singles, and they were just little carts. And the women had all this makeup on and a balloon attached to each cart and they did a drill performance and it oh, was fun. so much fun, you know? And I think that that's the thing that at any level you can really enjoy this sport. Um, um, and go ahead. Two, two things before I, we probably ought to start thinking about <laughs> wrapping up and sharing the day with other people. But um, when you go to a show, the first one I went to was, was Fairhill and it's not around anymore. Now it's called Elk. Creek, same facility, but uh, under new management. Um, I was there as a vet for the three-day eventing horses. And I didn't know anything. This was back 2000, probably. I knew nothing about driving. And I'm out there and all of a sudden I hear this god awful noise. And I'm like, what is going on? And it was a foreign hand. Oh, so if you've never been, if you've never been to and seen them live, they're unbelievably loud everything is jingling and jangling and there's four horses poof beats and you've got people up there and the drivers talking and it's it's really loud i was shocked i mean I, I it was a little scary i was oh my goodness how loud it is and then but that's something your horses have to get used to yeah. the noise and and one of the things that we're doing now with with stan is and by the name is my, my horse's name is stan lee <laughs> You have to um, drive, like a person has to hold a carriage and walk, just be in the arena and make noise. And then as a person's leading them, you walk on the left of them, you walk on the right of them, you walk behind them, you walk towards them. And we, that, we did that with the drag the other night. And we found that he was perfectly fine. He didn't like the drag in his right eye. Mm. So we repeated the right eye lots until he finally took a breath yeah yeah and then i'll set you up for our next webinar because i'm ready ready to do this again when yes. this is so fun uh i went to wag when it was at lexington in 2010 were you there uh no okay uh one of the uh, the what do you call it ex exhibitions i guess this lady came in to the arena and it was just like every 15 minutes there was a something you know and she had on a Wedgwood blue riding habit and she was riding a white Arabian side saddle. And I'm like, I want to be her. <laughs> and do you know what? I contacted, I, well, so I started riding side saddle. I, I got on a horse side saddle. Let's see if it really wanted to. Cause if people said, oh no, it's hard. It's not fun. It's terrible. And I got on, I'm like, no, it's wonderful. And so I'm like, I'm going to pursue it. So I, I started pursuing it and friend of a friend of a friend and contact and network. I ended up getting, she sent me her saddle to try on Newman. Wow. Well, now she, she's like a model and her little Arab is like, you know, 14. 
<laughs> and Newman and me, we're not, we're, we, we're bigger boat. <laughs> so it didn't fit him. And, and then, but I, you know, I got, we made it work, but yeah. So I actually had her saddle was the second side saddle I ever sat on. Wow. That's so, really fun. Side saddle is it's a, it's again, it's one of these really fascinating, um, not nearly as scary as long as it's balanced. <laughs> um, things. It, it, again, it took me a while to, to get comfortable. Yeah. But um, I rode two weeks ago, I rode a Grand Prix horse side <laughs> saddle because I wanted, and you know, I showed side saddle at a recognized dressage show with Newman because he, he, he loved it too. But I, I rode, um, this friend wanted to try side saddle and she has a Grand Prix horse. And, and so I rode first because she never even seen it. Oh, really? So, no. So I rode him first and showed her where everything goes and how to do stuff. And then do you know, she got on and did all the movements in the Grand Prix test in the side saddle and went, whew, that was fun. And I'm like, I didn't even canter till like the third time I rode. She's doing flying changes, canter pirouettes. Oh, wow. Pass, pass, pass. I'm oh. like, what? So... So uh, just we'll finish with this comment from Kathy. She okay. says, I'm so glad you're talking about all the training that goes into driving. One of the halfies, uh, it must be halflingers I bought that had told me that they had hitched him three times. It was apparent that the guy took the untouched horse, put him beside an old horse and beat him on the right hip. Oh, he was terrified of anyone going to his right hip. Took years to fix. I haven't uh -huh. hitched him. He's my trick pony. Yeah. That is an amazing point. You when when you buy a horse or you're even going to you know drive someone's horse and they tell you oh yeah he knows how to drive mm. nope i i start every horse like he knows nothing i would never drive a horse or hitch a horse that i didn't know had been hitched or driven right right because yeah. the the thing is it's so beautiful and so elegant and and if something goes wrong I mean, I've seen, I've saw one wreck that was really terrifying. It was in an arena and it was an older gentleman and something scared the horse and he got chucked out of the cart, you know, in the whole drama because the carts can flip, the horses can get, to, you know, I mean, it, it, it's elegant and beautiful and it is super dangerous. <laughs> so like, yeah. Kathy Knight says, even when she hasn't hitched my minutes for a long time, I go through the basics again. Yeah, me too. Yep. Yeah, the first hitch of the year, I'm always like, remember? <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's go through the steps and make sure everybody's okay with it. Even with Newman, who was a solid, solid citizen, I'm like, we've done this before. Yeah. yeah. Well, this has been absolutely fascinating and so much fun. I'm looking forward to when you come back. And uh, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll be back next week with another webinar. I can't remember who it is off the top of my head. I am leaving for the Hoof Collaborative up in Ipswich, Mass. with. Paige Poss and Yogi Sharp and organized by the Humble Hoof with Alicia Harlow. So hopefully we can have a report about that. And, uh, and there is a driving show at Ipswich this year that I might be going to. So. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's not. Well, I mean, thank you bit. for inviting me. I, I had a lot of fun doing this. So. Great. Well, that's what that's what we always want our guests to say when we're done. Let's do another one. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye. Bye bye.